This video will look at one method of cooking veal brains. Veal brains may be found in ethnic grocery stores or supermarkets. Veal brains is not a traditional American dish. Most Americans would not think of eating veal brains. However, this is a good organ meat. It tastes somewhat like liver. Um, the problem with cooking veal brains is that um, this is not muscle. It's protein and fat, um, but there isn't a lot of support structure internally to keep everything together. So this tends to be a bit more mushy and tougher to control, tougher to cook. Um, this veal brain weighs 0.8 pound and costs um, $5.99 per pound. So this is a uh, just under a five, $5 veal brain. Um, the way that this, that this will be prepared is that uh, the brain will be taken out of the vacuum sealed pack and it will be parboiled for about six minutes. The reason for that is to toughen up the veal brain so it's not so loose and mushy, uh, therefore making it easier to cut and control while cooking. After the veal brain will be parboiled for about six minutes, uh, or blanched if you will, whichever you'd like to call it, um, it'll be cut into pieces, it'll be breaded uh, in a mixture of flour, paprika, and cayenne pepper, and um, then it will be fried in a frying pan, uh, three minutes to a side, approximately. So this should cook a lot quicker. Um, nevertheless, care needs to be taken. Uh, this will, again, like, as I said, um, the veal brain will be taken out of the vacuum seal package. It'll be boiled for about six minutes um, in order to, to toughen up the uh, the tissue, making it easier to cut and control. Um, but of course before that happens, there's a membrane uh, on the outside of the brain. Uh, membrane and uh, other little, like, um, it's tough to describe, uh, little filaments uh, in addition to the membrane. They have to be cleaned out. They have to, that has to be removed. Uh, and once that happens, then you can, uh, you can flour the pieces, put them in the frying pan with hot oil, and fry them up uh, a few minutes to a side. So let's start. Here you have the veal brain out of this package. I haven't rinsed it yet. I did want to mention just briefly there might be some concern among some people regarding eating brains uh, especially given the um, mad cow disease scare in Britain a few years back. Um, that's obviously a concern anytime you eat brain, but I think that in America, um, the kind of problems that you had in Britain uh, won't exist. Um, regardless, I think that that issue has to be addressed to people who say that under no circumstances will they ever eat brain. Um, again, this is an organ meat that most Americans won't think about eating. Um, as you can see, this is a, it's very soft. It's very soft. I mean, um, I find it very difficult. Uh, this is this has to be boiled to harden the meat, to harden the tissue a little bit, so that it's easier to cut and control. This is so soft. Um, I know that there are some recipes uh, where these are the veal brains which are taken and then sautéed with scrambled eggs. That's definitely uh, another way of cooking them, but. Um, That won't be the method here. And there's a lot here. This this 0.8 pound, this, it's almost a pound of veal brain. Um, this is going to yield a lot of a lot of um, food uh, after it's deep fried or fried and breaded and fried. Uh, so I'm going to, and there you can see a little bit of there you can see a little bit of, of the membrane that covers the veal brain that uh, will have to be removed after this is boiled for a little, for about six minutes. That has to be removed. So anyway, I wanted you to see the veal brain out of the package, just get an idea of how soft this is. You know, again, uh, any health concerns, I, I think they're unwarranted here in America. Um, uh, but I did, I did want to address that. So I'm going to rinse this out and then boil it uh, for about six minutes or thereabouts. And um, see. The water's boiling. 
we are going to put the veal brain into the pot. Slowly, slowly, carefully. There you go. There you go. Let it come up back to a boil, which it'll do very quickly. Um, and just let it, let it boil for about six minutes to blanch. It's only been about a couple minutes, but I think as you can all already see, the veal brain has already changed from a pinkish color to a white color. And that, of course, is because it's being cooked. And that's the idea. Cooking the veal brain by boiling it for about six minutes, well, it'll cook it partially, but that isn't the goal. The goal is to make the, the uh, veal brain more manageable as you're cutting it. Uh, in its natural state, uh, fresh, from the, fresh from the veal, um, it's just so soft and mushy um, that you really can't control it. And the whole idea is to end up uh, cutting these, cutting the veal brain into bite-sized pieces, uh, dipping it in scrambled egg and flour, and then frying it up in hot oil. As you can see, this scum on the side, that's not blood, that's um, just protein from the veal brain. Um, you take a ladle or a spoon and you simply uh, scoop that out of the way. It uh, doesn't mean a thing. Give this about three more minutes and we're done. Okay, this, uh, the veal brain has been boiling. I lowered the heat from a high to a medium. Uh, again, anytime you're cooking, the cardinal sin with cooking is uh, overheating whatever it is you're cooking. Uh, this is more, more so of meat than anything else, but um, for example, right now I believe I will take this out of the uh, pot very carefully. As you can see, there's been a very drastic color change. Um, this was pink and white. Now this is white with gray. Uh, and that's simply because this has been cooking for about six minutes. I'm taking it out. I'm going to put it on a plate. Let it, let it sit and cool for a bit. Again, the whole idea was to get this meat a little bit tougher, uh, not as soft and mushy, so that we can cut through it with a serrated knife. Then what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a little, put some scrambled eggs on it, or dip them in scrambled eggs after I cut the veal brain up in pieces. And then I'm going to um, fry them, fry the breaded pieces in olive oil for about um, three minutes to a side, I think. Uh, we'll see. I'll take a piece out and cut into it and see that it's properly cooked. Um, the batter is simply white flour that's had um, cayenne pepper and paprika put into it. You'll see, I'll, I'll, show, well, I'll show this to you, but basically that's, that's all that's going to happen. Um, the veal brain is out of the pot. The veal brain is now sitting. I'm going to let it rest and cool a little bit uh, before I start cutting into it. Um, I will, I'll, I will um, cut them in pieces, bite-sized pieces, put those pieces in uh, some scrambled egg, uh, roll it in flour, and then fry them up about three minutes to a side. So stay tuned. Okay, I've let the veal brain uh, cool down for about um, 10 minutes or so, and then used a long serrated knife to cut the brain into more manageable bite-sized pieces uh, prior to dipping them in the batter, the egg batter, and then um, uh, breading them. Um, this, this veal brain uh, apparently had its membrane removed prior to packaging, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, that's uh, a bit more of the work that's already been done for you. Uh, in addition, when you do have to take the membrane out, you know there's always the um, uh, there's always the issue of um, damaging the pieces. Um, as you can see, this is still very soft and loose. I mean, it's been cooked. Um, I would hazard. I guess you could probably eat this now, uh, except it would uh, uh, it wouldn't uh, be as flavorful as breading it and. Um, Deep, actually frying it up. Actually these should be deep fried after battered and breaded but um, I don't have a deep fryer. I'm just going to use a frying pan. Um, as you can hear the olive oil is um, heating up in the frying pan. There's not that much olive oil, just enough to coat the bottom of the uh, pan. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy here and I've also put uh, some salt on the bottom for flavor. So that's what's going to happen. Um, piece will be battered and then breaded and then put in a 
hot frying pan with olive oil or oil of your choice um, and let cook for about maybe six minutes to the side. Uh, I'll take out a piece, give it a little test taste and make sure that it's been cooked properly. Uh, but that's pretty much it. And um, again, the whole idea with cooking, and this is a problem that moms all across America do with broccoli. This is why kids don't like broccoli or Brussels sprouts. You cook the item too long. Uh, I let I let this veal brain uh, boil and blanch for about six minutes and then I let it rest. I let it rest for two reasons. One, it's still particularly loose even after pulling it out of the uh, pot, um, uh, even after boiling it for six minutes. But also the, um, the idea is that anytime you're cooking something, especially meat, there is residual heat in the item. And so, and so in a sense, this veal brain was still cooking after I took it out of the pot. You have to be careful. The cardinal sin of all cooking is overheating whatever it is you're cooking. You over, I mean, you'll learn based on the limitations of your stove, etc., how much to, how long to cook something. But people tend to overcook their meat, and that is a cardinal sin. So again, a piece of veal brain will be dipped in egg batter, will be breaded in flour. This is flour, cayenne pepper, and paprika, and then cooked in olive oil. Uh, three minutes to a side, so stay tuned. Here are some of the veal brain pieces um, being fried up. Um, I had some difficulty in actually breading this. Um, you know, the thing with breading is, um, and this is something that I've seen in other recipes and cooking, is that you've got a wet, you have wet ingredients and you have dry ingredients. Uh, I got very frustrated in trying to, I took some, I took some of the batter, put it in a small plate, and then dipped the battered pieces of veal brain in that and it got very mushy, so I cheated. This is a bachelor's trick, I'd say. Is I put the, veal, the remaining veal pieces in the batter, and then I put, um, and then I put uh, breading, the breading or flour on top of that and sort of mushed it together. And then what I'll do is, um, <laughs> and then what I'll do is then as soon as these pieces are done, then I'm gonna go ahead and cook the remainder of the pieces. Um, it's a bit messy, the batter and the breading, but um, I think I've got a, uh, some kind of a solution that will at least help me keep things under control and not too messy. As I was trying to take individual pieces of veal brain, dipping them in batter, and then breading them in a separate plate, not, not where I have my main flour, but in a separate plate, it got uh, gunky. Uh, so hopefully this will be a good, um, a good um, cheat method of breading them. Uh, as you can see, the, um, the veal brain is, pieces are frying up. Do about three minutes to the side, and it doesn't have to be perfect, nothing is, and your mileage may vary, and this and that. As you can see, okay, I hope you can see, yeah, they've been, they've been fried off. So, um, give us a few more minutes, and then when I'm going to come back, uh, I'll have a plate full of um, fried veal brain. This is the second set of uh, veal brain that I put in the frying pan. This is from that uh, from the bowl where I basically um, had had enough of trying to batter these pieces and simply threw everything into the bowl and mixed it around. When I poured the um, veal brain pieces into the frying pan, I made sure that I used a fork to separate everything out. Um, it, this, is, this was not going to be any kind of a scrambled egg kind of a dish. These are battered and breaded veal brain pieces. Um, we've been frying for about three minutes on one side, so what I'm going to do is use a fork to turn them around. Um, initially, I used a very high heat to uh, get the oil going, uh, but then I lowered it to a medium heat. Again, the cardinal sin of cooking, no matter what you do, the cardinal sin is overcooking your food, especially your meat. Um, when you take meat off of a frying pan or out of the pot or out of the oven, it is still cooking. And a, a lot of recipes simply do not acknowledge the fact that, um, you know, you're still cooking the meat. I mean, it's, you're taking, you're taking the, the heat source away, but it's still cooking. So these pieces have been cooking three minutes on one side. I'll let them cook another three minutes on this side and then turn them over one more time for maybe another two or three minutes and we're done. Uh, after that, as these pieces here are doing, I'm going to let them rest. Uh, I've already tried a bit. It's, it's, 
it has a very light flavor to it. It's you can you can taste uh, it tastes like liver. I mean, if you have to, if you had to pin it down, and I've had veal brie before. Uh, it has a liver kind of a taste to it. It, it uh, it's very soft like sweetbreads. Um, and basically, it practically melts in your mouth. Um, but it's it's done. I mean, very minimal amount of cooking time and preparation. What I'll probably do is, if I don't have this for lunch, which I probably will, I could take this to work with me for lunch. So, basically, we're done. Very light, very flavorful, uh, just a hint of a livery, livery aftertaste. Uh, but there you have it.